Welcome back. Uh, in 2014, four opposition parties matched to challenge President Goodluck Jonathan in the 2015 general elections. The parties had formed the All Progressives Congress and uh, because of the need for radical change, and that was the mantra on which they ran the 2015 election on. Now, the merger in 2014 includes the ACN, led by Nigeria's former anti-corruption chief, Nuhu Ribadu, the Congress for Progressive Change, uh, CPC headed by former military ruler Muhammad Buhari, as well as the All Nigerian People's Party, ANPP, and the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, former Kano State Governor uh, and Minister of Defense uh, Musa Rabio Kwankwasu has joined forces with some of his associates to wrestle power from the All Progressives Congress in the 20. Uh, 23 general elections. Now, while the proponents of the third force say the party uh, has failed, uh, will there be a repeat of 2015 in 2023? Joining us on the breakfast to look at this and indeed the ongoing All Progressives Congress presidential primary, we have um, Kach Onoruju, who is a political analyst. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Kach. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, it seems like uh, you have hardly caught a minute's sleep all night. From well, it's a national <laughs> event, and uh, I don't think anybody would behave otherwise. So we are watching Nigerian history evolve. Yes, I've been awake. All right. What's been your impression of the, um, the entire All Progressives Congress primary? Are you um, thanking God that there was no consensus um, candidate, you know, and that we had a chance to see everyone say what they had to say and, uh, as it were, show their true colors. Well, I am happy that society pushed back at the attempts of those who are uncomfortable with democracy. We thought Babang and Jerabuari's uh, powers will intimidate everybody to collapse and allow him to impose a candidate. And you saw it was so difficult for him to do. When he called the meeting on Saturday, people came. And as they came, he couldn't find the voice to tell them that he has a candidate. As he said earlier, they should allow him to nominate his successor. So it only got to two days ago that uh, the party chairman tried to fly the kite as agreed. And you saw how legally Tinubu responded that the law is very clear. If they refuse, everybody should go to field for the contest. And that's where we are. That's why all of us became happy that the forces of progress were able to defeat that attempt to impose on the process. So that's where we're going. In the PDP, it failed because uh, the forces were not united. In the APC, it didn't fail. The forces achieved that which they should do. So I think what has happened is good for the country. Let them vote. Right now, as I am talking to you, the counties are going on. And whatever comes from it, we will then know how to embrace it. But for now, democracy and the will of the people don't over the attempt by a few to impose their will on the process. All right, so but let's get to the conduct of the elections uh, or the primaries. Now, and, um, you have reports saying that the convention suffered several hiccups, and one of such, we're talking about the vote dragging or the vote drags. And looking at the time, you have uh, a report saying that delegates from only three states had voted as of 3.52 a.m. And now, like you were saying, uh, counting is still going on. What do you make of the conduct, really, the administration of this election, and juxtaposing that, you know, with the umpire, uh, saddled with the responsibility of conducting elections generally? What should we expect, you know, in the general elections? I, I must tell you, I'm impressed with what I have seen. I also congratulate uh, the members of the party uh, who fought against the attempt to impose Ahmed Lawal on the process. If you notice, uh, days 
running up to today at all. He just bought a form and sat down. That's not democracy. And then he taught the cabal or whoever they have when he puts him on the process. The people said no, and everybody now went to the field, which is the right thing to do. For me, the fact that they were able to defeat the intentions of those who wanted to impose power, that is victory number one. Now we move to the second one. Nothing is said. You know, the original plot was the same people would block the PDP, block the APC. But as you can see, reactions like that of uh, Mr. Kwankwasu and especially that of uh, Mr. Pitopi have now produced uh, phenomenal disruptions, which we believe uh, suddenly will make the system very, very interesting. No matter what it is, we now can look elsewhere. I understand what Kwankwasu is doing. I'm also excited about what Pitopi is doing. Society should have choices. We shouldn't all be headed into some tricky holes and then nobody will have a uh, new uh, way to uh, complain from a different standpoint. This is a democracy. Democracy is all about providing choice. And the defeat of the imposition of Ahmed Lawal and the subsequent moving to go and vote, as we have said, is progress for Nigeria, progress for democracy. I like what I've seen. And I believe we are beginning now to imbibe but, the energy to challenge the status quo. And if we sustain, create a better society for the new generation. I am most excited currently how the NSAS generation were able to find a masquerade in Peter Ove. I also like what Kongpaso has done, trying to repeat the old behavior of Aminu Kando. This is good. I think the democracy is moving forward in the very, very current directions. All right. Let's um, just uh, display now a, a quick um, uh, infographic of uh, the, the contenders out there. And, of course, we're looking at, of course, the, 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 the leaders. Uh, we have the top APC contenders, you can see. Uh, Bola Metinbu from the southwest, uh, Kairi Faimi, Yemir Shibajo, of course, also from the southwest, Rotimi Amechi uh, from the southern part of the country, south-south, as we call it, and uh, Governor David Umahi of Ebony State as well. Uh, these are the five leading contenders. There was a list that came up uh, at a point yesterday. Um, we, we saw the committee of uh, the screening committee led by John Odige Oyego of the All Progressives Congress uh, prune the names from 23 to 13. And then uh, at some point, whilst there was a clamor by the president for a consensus candidate, a, de um, a request or demand, uh, we were told that the southern governors, uh, having decided to support a candidate from the south, had come up with these five names. We didn't see any official announcement or we didn't see any official statement, but all of them, even those who didn't make it to the uh, final 13-man list, still showed up at the venue um, to, to, to contend, apart from, uh, I think, uh, Namani, former Senate president. Uh, your thoughts on, on what transpired all the drama in the lead up to the primary with the actions you've talked about, of course, Abdullah Adamu's uh, attempts and then to, to foist um, uh, Senate President Ahmed Lawan. But what about the, the moves by the National Working Committee of the APC and the Governors Forum, as well as the Southern Governors Forum. Let's not forget also Rotimi Akedulu, Governor of Ondo State, put out a statement where he, in no certain, on certain terms, condemned the chairman of the party. Uh, it was quite a very, very strongly worded statement by the Governor of Ondo State. Your thoughts, uh, Dr. Nunijo? Yes, uh, I followed that process. That process uh, was simply not in line with the demands of a democratic uh, 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 society or association. Uh, the chairman, uh, having been part of the strategy by President Buhari to impose uh, Ahmed Lawal, uh, he saw a lot of pushback. So when that failed, uh, they, he now uh, said that the president said he should bring down. And then they went to that meeting. So by about two o'clock, uh, the midnight, two days ago, when I had those five names, when it was shown to President Buhari, he said, no, bring it down to two names. And they managed as they could. They only could manage to get three names, and that was 
Amenchi, uh, Ebola, Amenchi, Nibu, and Professor Simbancho. And uh, when we saw that was not democratic, the, all the people who put forth said no, in line with the demands of the party rules, since there's no consensus, all of them will be available. They are on the speech, and that's why you saw everybody had their chance to make their speech and talk, and then later on, on their own, aspirants were now stepping down. That is the right thing to do, not you impose. No, and not even governors select who. Who are you to do that? This is a democracy, and that's the beauty about it. You don't have to keep quiet for every imposition of wrong on you. If you don't complain, then that's you giving up your rights. So it is good that our people are learning to say no. No doesn't mean I'm against you. No simply means I don't agree with your position. That's the beauty of democracy. The man says yes, we say no. He says no, we say yes. On these interrogations, we provide the public with a very, very best choice and something very, very close to what the truths are. So I believe that we are making progress. I think the events of the past 22 hours were very good for our democracy in that the president, uh, who was uh, being played out, everything he thought played out by Abdullah Haidamu, because there was no way Abdullah Haidamu could have announced Ahmed Lawa without the president's authorization. So I see the hand of President Buhari in those attempts to undermine the process. And I also see as positive the courage within the aspirant circle to say no, let the right thing be done. And that's why you saw the right thing done. So we are making progress. We are making progress. If it were before, we wouldn't see men with Buhari have such courage to resist him. And that's, you can see now Buhari is living, is more or less intellectually or psychologically a limp dog. So let's all take our country back. Once he leaves the scene, that's when the real politics will start. That's probably when APC could not transition into a proper political party because all along it has been like uh, a private property he had to keep him in power and then we strip the company and on Dr. Karch, Dr. Karch and Unuju. So now we are moving forward. Now we are making eyes are watching what is going on. I have no doubt we will get from here to a better place. Definitely. Uh, Dr. Kachanunuju, let's take a quick break now and look at, you know, the speech of the former governor of Lagos State, who's also vying to become the flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress, contesting for that election since 2023. We'll be right back. Stay with us. As members of All Progressive Congress, gather both in celebration an instant test of our democratic fitness. We have all waited and worked for this day to come. Now it is upon us, we must rise to the occasion. We now stand before all Nigerians. We have always said, this party may well be the last best hope for Nigeria to attain its finest destiny. Those we shall use this confession to show the world that APC celebrates democracy by faithfully participating in it. Soon, we will freely and fairly nominate the person to follow President Muhammad Adubuaris as our next standard bearer. For you delegates, this is a heavy responsibility. I know you will meet this duty with the seriousness it deserves. The convention also marked the end of the first phase of year 2023 election cycle. 
This primary season has been one of intense competition among those who aspire to the nomination. I commend the other aspirants for the dignity and zeal with which they have conducted their campaigns. Such strong, persistent competition will make us better as a party. By today's end, you will have selected parties candidates who definitely want to see a great process to win. We must emerge from today a unified force focused on the cooperation and share victory. As President Buhari has said, our party's objective must be to triumph in the next year's general election at all levels. The candidates you select must deliver victory in the national election and have the personal gravity and national recognition to pull us through to victory in the state and local government elections as well. He must instill a sense of victory and confidence. Moreover, the council leaders must unite in adherence of all walks of life from all parts of the country. He must have the experience. He must have the experience. All right, uh, Dr. Kaj, uh, let's quickly share your thoughts. I mean, listening to that now, and a lot of persons have, said, uh, have described the speech as very factual, full of experience and very precise, avoiding theoretical grammar and going straight to the point of what, you know, the former governor of Lagos State holds for uh, the country, Nigeria. But your thoughts on this one? Well, uh, after the Ogun uh, outburst, uh, everything... Uh, Mr. Tinubu says has become very topically important. So I am not surprised that his words are well chosen. Of all that were all gathered there, it is his words that uh, a lot of the party are looking to in regards to his reactions to the way things are. He is a foundation member of the idea and uh, which was built to help this experiment called Nation. So if idea called the coalition, we expect to hear his reaction. And uh, after his reaction in Abiyukuta, we were now expecting to hear more of what's in his mind through his words. So that's why the things he said are very, very listened to. And I think those words were very precise, well selected. I must tell you that uh, Tinibu has done very well. Uh, when the issue of Ahmed Lawa was floated as a kite. It was uh, the legal positions of his campaign, which was written by a son, which actually quoted a virtually part of the Electoral Act, which says, this is how we should be, this is how we should be, this is how we should be. He wasn't talking back to the party. He was simply reminding the party about the law, insist on the law, stay with the law, conduct the election with, through the Electoral Act. And I think that finally uh, is what we got. And uh, I like the fact that uh, he has seen himself now as a new leader of the new internal opposition in the party. Because if you understand, I will tell you politically, nature of horse family. So when nobody could speak up in APC to defend the ethics of the foundation agreements, it was Bola Tinibu who stood up to say, this is what happened, this is the agreement, this is what I expect you to do, and this is what the law says, and I pray you hack into the law. And that was exactly what you saw happen. So those who were testing the waters understood that if Tinibu was going to throw the laws at them, and nobody was that for the sake of 
peace. Let us stay in line with law. That's why we're having the votes being counted right now. If not, there will be no vote counting. It will just be a ceremony to coronate Mr. Ahmed Lawal as President Buhari and the party chairman sought to do. So it is good that we're here. And the more he speaks, the more we will hold him to those words, the more we will listen carefully for what is it that he is saying and what is it that the opposition people in the party are saying to the powers that be. And I welcome what he said. I also like to what I said. It's a one on the speech. Was right. actually we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll come to that in a jiffy. Uh, yes. Dr. Katch, apologies, sincere apologies. We'll come to uh, Bono Yaono's speech, uh, one of the highlights of the night. I'm sure you would agree. But um, let's let's go over to back to the Hill Square to listen to what um, uh, the next major contender to speak, being the Minister of Transportation, a former Minister of Transportation, the former uh, Governor of River State, had to say, uh, Rotimi Chibike Amechi. Your Excellency, in my 57 years of existence, I want to tell Nigerians and the delegates who are here, don't vote for me if I'm not qualified. Your Excellency, I want this, camp this debate or discussion or campaign to be about our referendum, to be a referendum on our performance. Your Excellency, I am the most experienced of all the candidates. Your Excellency and Nigerians, I was elected Speaker of River State House of Assembly and I served for two terms. Your Excellency, while serving as Speaker, I was the Chairman of the uh, State Speakers of Nigeria twice. After that, Your Excellency, I became the Governor of River State. And I served for two terms. Your Excellency, after serving for two terms, in the course of my service to my colleagues as speaker, as governor, I was elected the chairman of Governor's Forum twice. Your Excellency, by your grace and the grace of God, you appointed me the Minister for Transportation. Again, I served twice. Your Excellency, you appointed me the Director General of your campaign. Again, I served twice. Your Excellency, the first Nigerian in the history book of Nigeria to have, in conjunction with others, not alone, led a campaign that remove the sitting government to bring in the opposition. Everybody in the, in the party will attest to the fact that I, Chibike Rotimiya Amechi, worked very hard, sleepless night, to ensure with others that Nigerians elected our dear president. Rest and see, why, go, why serving as the governor of River City? All right, Dr. Nunuju, uh, some have called Amechi's speech one of the highlights of the night. Um, he says that uh, he is the most experienced of all the candidates, and of course, if he does not perform, Nigerians should fire him. Uh, your thoughts on, on what Amechi uh, said last night, dwelling on mostly on what he has done in the past, his record, and what he will do uh, if elected as president of Nigeria? Well, uh uh, unfortunately, his speech simply were packed with campaign uh, uh, bullet points and all that said, I've served, I've served, I've served, I've served. But then, how has those services impacted upon Nigeria? You serve to bring APC, and what has APC done? Divided the country, undermined the country, and our country is at its most divisive period in our history. So, yes, you were part of the APC, but you were not able to control events when they got out of hand and Buhari couldn't control it. And today, we are ranked as the most violent society in the whole of Africa. Well, Dr. No, no, Dr. Noju, to, to be fair to the man, he, he, he talked about his record, first of all, as um, 
Speaker of the River State House of Assembly, where he became not just Speaker, but Chairman of the Speakers of Houses of Assembly in the, in the country. He now talked about his record as two-time Governor of River State. Uh, he gave his record in healthcare in River State. He gave his record in education in River State. He gave his record in the economy in River State. He gave his record in tackling security in River State. He gave his record in, in, in addressing agriculture in River State and said he would replicate this, um, what he did, the template, the success, that same thing would do in Nigeria. So he started from what he had done in River State. For instance, in River State, he talked about building several brand new healthcare centers, employing more than 600 doctors and buying every one of those doctors a car so that they will stay in the hinterlands, in the villages and the towns where doctors do not want to go to. Well, one thing I can tell you is of all those things he, he has said, Amechi is not Peter Obi. So these are the things you can see. He, of all those things he said, he doesn't have a record close to what Peter Obi is now using to regale Nigerians and force our country people into a brand new phenomenon. So leave that alone. None of them spoke up as President Buhari's uh, problems in governance showed up and sought to divide our society, sought to undermine our country. None spoke up against the violence. Today we are in a slow motion civil war. None spoke about the employment of nepotism as policy of the Buhari administration. All right, Tell Dr. Katch. Dr. Yes. Katch, uh, for the want of time, let's yes. quickly... Um, you know, also take a look at the vice president's speech, which some people have tagged as the best last night, especially when he started on that emotional note where he recognized, you know, the attack that happened in Ondo State or whatever precise. Uh, let's take a look at that. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Leaders of our party, members of our party, distinguished guests, all of our young people, Ladies and gentlemen, the great Nigerian youth, the greatest of the greatest of the greatest Nigerian youth, thank you very much. Thank you very much. First, let me begin, let me begin, let me begin on a solemn note. I join you and the good people of Ondo State in mourning the victims, men, women, and children of the heinous and dastardly terrorist act that took place at the St. Francis Catholic Church in Owo, and other victims of terrorism across the country. And I pray that the, that their fam that the Lord God Almighty will comfort their families and that we'll never see a repeat of these heinous acts in our nation again. I'm deeply honored to stand before you today and to share this platform with 22 other exceptional members of our great party who today vie for the preferment of the presidential candidate of our great party, the APC. Like most of us here, I am a Nigerian. I was born here. My parents were born here. I went to primary, secondary schools, and university here. I have worked here all my life. This country has afforded me most of the education and opportunities and the worldview that I have. I have seen and experienced the great prospects of Nigeria. I know that it is possible for us to have a world-class educational system. It is possible to have a world-class healthcare system for all Nigerians. It is possible to establish a tech economy here in Nigeria. It is possible to establish a bitumen processing industry in Ondo, gold processing in Zamfara and Oshun, and exploit and process the finest precious metals and stone. All right. Uh uh, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, also vying for the presidential seat ahead of, I mean, in 2023 under the APC. But Dr. Katch, you mentioned that none of these um, contestants or aspirants, however, 
have been able to um, highlight the problems of Nigeria. You, you have the vice president. He's talked about the educational sector, the health sector. And we understand that all of this has contributed, you know, as a major challenge in our economy, including security. Uh, so, so, but what do you really make of this? Can you also still say that um, no candidate actually talked about the problem of this country? Yes, thank you very much. This man, I see all of them as collectively guilty of whatever me and you accused President Buhari of. Why? They kept quiet. They never spoke against the terrorism. I don't know. Look at them. Today he's mentioned about the killings in our war. And you hear what Akira Dudu said. Akira Dudu says that the Owa massacre were done by the same Bororo Fulani bandits who have been killing people in the north. How many times has any of these men on the podium ever complained about the slow motion terrorism? None of them does. You only come now to make noise on a campaign ground. I see all of them as guilty of every offense we accuse as a people present Buhari of. Because why? They kept mute while the country burned. That's why I think Nigeria should reject them. Never mind about our sectional or our ethnic inclinations to emotions. This band of men failed this country. They failed because as real leaders, they should have spoken up when we expected them to. And that's why I remember the quote by Martin Luther King that they will not worry about their enemies, but will very, very much worry about the silence of our friends during the times of challenge. When our country was being ravaged by terrorism, they never spoke because they thought the presidential body language supported those who were shooting down aircraft in Zampara. Okay. All right. Going up uh, railway doc, lines doc. and stopping the Kaduna airport from being functional doc. apart from kidnapping people D on doc, the doc, we, we, we what have to unfortunately said? interrupt Nothing. you. Uh, uh, Doc, one of the uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nonoju. Let's quickly listen to um, uh, Pastor Dr. Chunde Bakare of uh, Lateran Assembly, who is a kind an aspirant. He says he is the 16th president of Nigeria. He is to be uh, the 16th president of Nigeria, as God has uh, revealed to him. He had a very, very impressive, some would say, and uh, in inspiring uh, speech. Let's listen, Mr. President, dear delegates. The time is now and the hour has come. Tonight, I'm not here to step down for anyone. I respect all aspirants and I've said wonderful things about them, including Ashwaju Bola Tinumbu. But I am here by the grace of God to step up with the support of the delegates as the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm offering myself to close the distance between the Nigerian reality and every Nigerian dream. I will, by God's grace, unlock the power of public policy to accelerate the transformation of our nation. I will infuse our young people with a surge of hope for what... Uh, Dr. Nunchu, very quickly, your thoughts on two things. Number one, uh, the uh, flurry of those stepping down for uh, Ashiwa Jibola Tinubu, whether that would translate into votes, uh, delegates' votes for him. Um, and then secondly, Obona Ayono's passionate appeal to the party, it was really uh, touching what he said. Very quickly, please, please, because of time. Thank you. The clip you've just played now of Tunde Bakari <laughs> is that of a clown, is the biggest clown game. One, Bakari didn't come as a member of the party. No, he came as a Nigerian who said Buhari promised him. After him, he will impose him. Bakare is the new, is the old in days, Ahmed Lawa, a man who thought he'd impose as president just because somebody promised you something some time ago. So leave that alone. Let's, if we move forward, I will tell you it's been a very good night. It has been a very good 72 hours for our democracy. I pray that those who have found their energy and their courage in the past 72 hours will also sustain such momentum because nation building is not an event. It is a process. 
And I also love that the same way Tinubu cries out against justice being meted to him, that he also learns to cry when justice is being meted to anyone. All because right. injustice against anyone in society is injustice to the rest of the society. And we have, have to go. Dr. Ruju, thank you very much for your time. Yes. Uh, uh, fortunately, we have run out of time. There's a lot to talk about. We will be engaging with you a lot more as we count down to the 2023 elections. I'm, I'm going to join you after the program, Messi and myself and the crew, to grab our popcorn and see who <laughs> comes out emerges uh, as the winner. Um, it reminds me of what happened the days of Basanjo when uh, Chief Tommy Kimi was counting his votes and he went to Basanjo, or Basanjo, or Basanjo. I don't know whether we're going to see something like that. But well, thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. Merci. Uh, we're looking forward to, to that. I can't wait to get back to watching it, uh, but we have to go. Definitely. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. We do appreciate your time. And we will return tomorrow with The Breakfast. The time will be 7 o'clock up until now. We take a break now. When we return, it will be time for the news. But if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic Wednesday. And I'm Kofi Bartels. God bless Nigeria. And of course, we're back tomorrow, same time.